Um, some of you that are subscribed to this channel may have seen some of my big Make Balance program intro videos, which are very short, five to six minutes of length, um, no more than that, just an intro of each of the topics that I, um, that I give my students from this program. The lead process of projects, uh, benefits, how to do it, what to do, what to expect, um, what you need to know, and it's everything, absolutely everything wrapped up in this 12-week program, which is now going to be available here in my YouTube channel. So I really hope that this content is of value for you. And just in return, I would ask for you to hit the subscribe button, um, like this video, and the rest of the videos that are coming up. Um, share these videos with who might need this information, who might see the value of this information. And well, I just, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being a subscriber. And I just hope this information is of value for you. We're going to continue with the first module of the Make Balance program. I'll see you there. We are going to begin. Here comes the fun. This is an example of what I do, how I anal analyze these type of projects, and how do I go step by step through a checklist for these type of projects, okay? So I'm going to go right into the checklist. So you are going to get a little bit more familiar with it. You do need to um, make a little bit more of research on your own in the USGBC lead credit library. Um, I would be letting the, the link in this module so you can go ahead and check it out. So um, as I said before, I've been working on lead certification projects and this whole program is based on the lead certification rating system. Guys, so this is the checklist for Core Shell projects. And we are uh, going through the lead B4. We are not going through right now through the um, lead B4.1, uh, but we are going um, to check this, this, this list right now. And the way that we can consider if we are able to receive any points in this category, which is a location and transportation, is by the location of your project. And what, um, what are we looking for in the location of this, these type of projects? Hi everyone, I just want to make a quick pause here before we continue so that you can fully understand this lesson. Don't forget to check out this video where the surrounding density calculations and review is explained. Um, so before we do continue with this lesson, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like this video if you're liking it so far, and share this content where you know that may benefit from this information. And without further ado, we can continue now. Thank you so much. So now, you did see the density, right? Where we have a lot of density, what we can always have here in mind is that we are going to have around what we saw right now, it's around three to four points for surrounding density and diverse uses. I can I can calculate that by by I, by my experience, but but once you have a little bit more of experience. Um, and you do your calculations uh, for density, you will be learning how to have an average of, um, of density and points related to points on your checklist um, once you're a little bit more familiar with. Okay, so having a lot of density will give you points on surrounding density and diverse uses. It can give you points on access to quality transit. You will have to, um, investigate uh, the quality of public public transportation in, in that zone, in that area. So that's um, it's part of the investigation that we all have to do to know how many points we can get in this, in this, for this project. When you are making an analysis, like the one we are doing right now for a bidding process, you can, you can estimate without making so many calculations, because calculations, if you do have time to do it, do it. 
I really recommend you to do it. If you don't have time to do these type of calculations and have a number for these credits, I really recommend you to go, for example, if you have six points here, you can consider three. If you have six here, consider 50%, three. Okay, so having a lot of density will give you points on surrounding density and diverse uses. It can give you points on access to quality transit. You would have to um, investigate uh, the quality, of, okay? If, um, if you see, and these two right here are considered for the 400 meter radius. For this one right here, you consider the 800 um, meter radius, okay? So just make sure you are taking notes for surrounding density and diverse uses, access to quality transit, you would be using your radius of 400 meters. For bicycle facilities, you will, will be using your radius of 800 meters, okay? And once you go through um, all of these credits and all of the prerequisites, you will see why the 400 meters and why the 800 meters, okay? So remember to check that out and just have it in mind. and keep it as a tool, because this is what you are going to go back to all the time to check what the what are the requirements of each of the credits, each of the prerequisite sites, okay? You will always need this tool. I don't know them by heart. These you will, will be using your radius of 800 meters, okay? And once you go through um, all of these credits and all of the prerequisite sites, you will see why the 400 meters and why the 800 meters, okay? So remember to check that out and just have it in mind and keep it as a tool because this is what you are going to go back to all the time to check what the what are the requirements of each of the credits, each of the prerequisite sites, okay? You will always need this tool. I don't know them by heart, okay? I don't know every little single thing by heart. And these five years, I have not, um, you know, memorized everything. It's too much information. So just remember that. Put in your notebook, 800 meters for bicycle facilities, okay? So you can um, consider one point, that's what you get. And for a uh, reduction of your parking footprint, that you will have to check on the local regulations, how many parking stalls um, are required for these type of projects and see if, um, your project is complying with the minimum requirement of the local regulations. If your project is is falling lower than the local re regulations, and I will be get going to the um, calculations that you may be using to check if your project uh, will have this credit feasible for or not. Okay, um, I would give you this tool. I would give you. I would put it in, in, in this module so you will have it clear and you will have it related, okay? So um, it, you just have to check how many parking, parking spaces are there in your project, how many um, parking spaces are, are considered as minimum by your local regulations and make the arrangements or make the calculations just to check if you comply with this credit, okay? And green vehicles. Green vehicles, I usually leave this um, at the end because you can either put them or not, but if you need more points, then you will, you will need them. You will need um, to put chargers for green vehicles. Sensitive land protection, this is one of the easiest credits, so please go ahead and check those. I, I will give you information on how to cope and how to um, go about with the credits, the easy ones, um, calculations, and um, a whole bunch of other stuff, guys. There's a lot of information really that you will be getting from this program. And trust me, everything, everything is really, really important for you to have and everything will be of use for you. And it will just make your job very, very easy, okay? You will have everything in your hands. It's just that you get the hold of it and that you um, start using it, okay? Because if you just leave it there, I mean, it's not gonna be of use. So you have to use it, okay? 
you have to promise me to use it. So this is how you start making your analysis for your project. These are the prerequisites. These are required for the certification. You need to, and credits are optional. It all depends on your score. What is the objective of your project? How many um, points or the level of certification that the project is aiming to, um, to get certified on. We have the um, certified level, which is 40 to 49 points, silver 50 to 59 points, gold from 60 to 79 points, and platinum from 80 to 110, which are maximum points. So it all depends on what your project is aiming and what your project's objectives are, okay? Once you go to sustainable sites, you will be an, um, knowing that these are the prerequisites. If you can see in location transportation, we have no prerequisites. Integrative process, uh, you need to check all of these in the lead credit library so you would know exactly the requirements. For example, here you make a preliminary analysis of water and energy for your project, a um, simple box for energy. And um, it all depends on the project scope, okay? It all depends on what you want to have have here, okay? What is the objective of your project? If it's just certified silver, gold, or platinum. And that is what you need to get, okay? Sustainable sites, what are we looking on sustainable sites? We are looking on roofing materials for heat island reduction. We are looking for um, lighting fixtures in the exterior for bug rating and, um, and having a pollution reduction on the exterior. Uh, we are looking for rainwater management, what we were talking about before in the other video, that we are going to check our drawings to see how the project will be managing the rainwater. We are looking at the whole picture of the project. If the project has an open space that will um, comply with the requirements of the, of the credit, then we can go ahead and, and get that credit um, going in our checklist. If we don't uh, have the requirements that we need to comply with the credits, then we don't have uh, the ability and the capability, the project doesn't have the capability to, to reach and um, comply with this credit, okay? And that's how we are going to go with each one of the credits. Site assessment is one of the easiest credits, and I will give you the information on how to cope with it and how to uh, um, comply with it. So please um, make that as a note. Site assessment is one of the easiest credits. Sensitive land protection is one of the easiest credits. Basically, these are easy credits, and um, you are going to check why. Okay, I give you an overview of what you need to know to have a, a an idea of how to do this checklist, right? To, to put this checklist together. Water efficiency, we do have three prerequisites in this, um, in this category. We have the outdoor water use reduction, which, which is asking us to have a minimum percentage reduction, and that's going to be your job, guys, um, to check what's the percentage of these um, reductions which is outdoor, indoor, and the building level water metering. This is what we were talking about on the last video, that we have a permanent water meter for our project. So we comply with this prerequisite. And um, these credits are, are usually, well, these, are, these come from the prerequisites, which gives us the opportunity to save more water. And how would you know how to save more water? I would give you this tip, these tips, and please write them down because you are going to need this. And if you want to focus your projects on this, this is the way I do it. And this is the way I've been um, accomplishing and achieving these type of uh, savings and these type of certifications. Okay, guys, outdoor. What are you looking for to achieve two points for a core and chill project on your outdoor water use reduction? Seriscape landscape, regional plants. You need to have regional plants, plants that don't use, use um, a lot of water, that don't need to be um, under a, an irrigation system, either dripping system or other type of irrigation system. Do not, do not use, um, what is it? Um, 
oh, I forgot the name. Grass. No grass, guys. Don't use grass. Okay. Original plants. Plants that don't use much water. Uh, indoor water use reduction. What do you need to achieve at least 45% of water savings? Write this down. 0 0.8 GPF gallons per, per flush for your toilets. Tank toilets. You need 0 0.35 GPM gallons per minute for your faucets, lavatory faucets, public lavatory faucets, okay? Um, 0 0.5 GPM on your kitchen faucets, 0 0.5 GPM on your showers. Okay, and that's the basics, guys. Those are the basics. If you guys are looking at a project that will have a cafeteria, then what you would be looking for and the accessories of the cafeteria, like ice machines and all of this, they will need to be Energy Star rated. Okay, make sure that your accessories are Energy Star rated and your electrical accessories for the project are Energy Star rated. You will have this information. I will give you all of the information that you need you will be going through a lot of information. I did not promise this will be um, very, very simple or easy or, or um, you know, there's a lot of information and from the beginning I did make that clear. But that is, and that doesn't mean it's going to be impossible. Of course, it's not impossible. I'm giving you like major tips that you guys can use, okay? Next, next credit, cooling tower. We usually don't have cooling towers in these type of projects, but if you have a cooling tower, go on and check the lead credit library. So you will know the requirements for um, to, to get these points for the cooling tower. Okay, guys, um, please do, do that. The water metering, this, this water metering is submetering and these submeters need to be in the inside of the building, okay? If you have tenant improvements, you will need to have metering in their in their bathrooms. They, they will need to have metering in, in their showers if they have showers, and, and they will need to have metering in their boilers, and if they do have boilers and their scope of work. And um, you can also put meterings on the cooling tower. And if you have a, a, a treatment plant, water treatment plant, then you will have a metering in your water treatment plant. It all depends on what the strategies that you are considering for your project. Okay, guys, let's move on. Energy, we have an energy, we have four prerequisites, um, commissioning process, which are these, and the other one that the commissioning agent does is the ener energy model, which is this right here, and is um, related to the optimized energy performance. Okay, so, How do you know how many points you can consider for these? I am giving you this information for Corn Shell. You can take it. And these are the numbers that we usually consider for Corn Shell buildings. Right now, I am considering six as minimum and three as possible. Okay, guys? So I will be, um, you can consider that as well. That's what we have been um, getting for Corn Shell projects as of now. We usually do get from nine to 11. It all depends on what we do on the fundamental commissioning, which is um, related to the ASHRAE 90.1 2010. Okay, guys, so check that out. You will be having the ASHRAE in your resources, guys. I think I didn't tell you guys that, but it was a surprise. It was a surprise, <laughs> not anymore. So yes, I will be giving, giving you guys the ASHRAE, okay? So you can have that in hand. And okay, so let's move on guys. Just remember, you guys have to go through all of these, what the requirements are. This is an advanced metering for energy, uh, demand response. It all depends if um, you do have it available in, in your city where your project is going to be located. Energy, renewable energy, this, uh, it all depends on the project's scope of work and the objectives of the project. Enhanced refrigerant management for current shell is a very, very easy 
uh, credit, which usually corn shell projects usually just use um, exhaust system and louvers. That's all they use. So they don't use any refrigerants. So this is practically a free credit that you can get for these type of projects. Green power and carbon offsets. It all depends on what the project is um, looking for, okay, the objectives of the project. Materials and resources, guys. We have two prerequisites here. We need to have um, an area for collection of recyclables, and this is for um, the, for current share projects, we need to have this area in the exterior of the project where is feasible for um, recollectors to go ahead and, and get all of the waste that comes from the building. <clears throat> and, um, and for interiors, you will need to have um, bins inside in, in areas that are um, feasible for these bins, like coffee areas, kitchen, and anywhere that you may need to have these bins for, um, for waste, okay? Uh, construction and demolition waste management. So this is what you need to have permanently, and this is what you need to do during construction have your, your areas where you manage your waste. And we usually do always get at least a 75% of the waste diverted. It's, it's very easy to get to that waste. It's just a matter of cooperation and coordination, guys, but you can get to it. It's very easy. It's very, very easy to get to that. And these are the material credits Life, the, the building life cycle impact reduction is a whole evaluation of the whole building's materials, which I have not done. And I will be very sincere with you guys. I have not done that analysis, but there are um, software that you can use to do this analysis. And I think I do have the links around there. I will be giving you that information as well. So you can have it on hand if, you, or if your project is, um, is uh, looking, aiming for this, this credit. Okay, guys. So these three right here are the EPDs, which I will be giving you resources so you can check if the products and materials that you are using permanently in your project have EPDs. This is for sourcing, um, sourcing of raw materials. This is for concrete and metals and wood. So you just have to check where are they coming from, the percentage of recycled content that they have, okay? And anything of materials and um, any material that are permanently installed in the, in the project may be um, feasible to, to be included in this, in this credit, okay? So you just need to check if they comply with the requirements of the credit. And I will be giving you the resources to check to where to check those type of materials and um, there are cert third party certifications for these materials, guys. Uh, the, the next one is materials as well, material ingredients, which is um, having the health product HPDs and the health product declaration of the materials. And um, as well, I would give you guys the links where you can find this information for your products. Okay, it's just, it's just a search box. You put the brand and model or just the brand and then look for the model. It all depends on how you um, do your searching guys. Okay, but I will be giving you this information. Let's move on. Um, indoor environmental quality. You have two prerequisites. This is the minimum indoor air quality performance is uh, related to the ASHRAE 62.1 2010, which I will be giving out to you as well. Okay, I didn't tell you guys, but since I told you about the other ASHRAE, then I might as well tell you about this ASHRAE as well. Okay, <laughs> so uh, the other prerequisite for this category is the environmental tobacco smoke control. And this means that there's no smoking during construction, guys. No smoking during construction and no smoking inside the building once the building is um, done and ready to go, okay? Uh, the owner, owner will need to sign a policy where they are responsible of not having this type of um, um, environment in the interiors, okay? And if they do need to have an area, it needs to be a, a far area from the building at least, 
30 feet from the building. That's what I really, really suggest because this uh, prerequisite asks for 25 feet from uh, main doors, um, air, air intakes. Um, so that's it, 25 feet from anything, anywhere that the smoke can come inside the building. Okay, it's easier that way. <laughs> so enhance indoor air quality strategies. This is just to enhance what we have been doing in the minimum indoor air quality performance is having maybe um, grills at the entrance for um, retention of contamination or rollout mats that those are useful as well and they do the same thing, okay? So it all depends on the scope and what you need to, um, to process the certification. Low emitting materials, guys. Here we are talking about BOCs and please check on all the materials that uh, you need to be checking on um, for these types of uh, VOCs, where you need to be checking for these VOCs. And uh, construction indoor air quality management plan. This plan, and this is one of the ECS credits for this category, which is a plan that you will make for your projects where you, um, where you describe how to manage materials, HVAC ducts and system, and how to manage the, um, the, um, the process in the inside of the project during construction. I will be giving you the information that you need to do this, um, do this plan for your projects. Daylight, we are talking about skylights, we are talking about uh, curtain walls, okay? It all depends on what the, the analysis of daylight will arise once you do it, once you have the information of the project. And just uh, keep in mind that if you are doing a ware warehouse and you have a 5% of skylights in your roof, then you will be compliant with at least two points of this um, credit, okay? Quality views, remember for quality views, you need to have low, um, low furniture at the level of, of, of the site area and curtain walls, okay? So if you have a project that may be feasible of this, this could be one of the credits that you may be able to, to achieve. Innovation, uh, credits of innovation. These credits will be, um, you can get this by exemplary performance on one of these, of some of these credits over here on the other categories and regional priority credits are determined by the location of your project. Okay, guys. So you have work to do. You have starting to do. You will be going through the, and I will say it again, the lead credit library for lead before. Okay, on this rating system, Corinthia. So you can go ahead and go through these all of these uh, credits and prerequisites. Well, this is the end of this video of this lesson. Just remember that you can watch part two here, which is very important. It's the next part of this video. I'm just trying to make this video a little bit shorter and not bore you for an hour. So um, just don't forget to watch part two which uh, will give you the rest of the information of this lesson. And uh, well, it's been a pleasure for me to share this content with you. I hope that this information and this content is of value for you. I only ask that if you are liking this content, you're liking this information, just hit the subscribe, the subscribe button, uh, give me a like, and share these videos with whom may need this information, that may need these lessons. Um, and I'll just... See you in the next video. Bye.